activity arising from formless reality. Human beings dwell in samsara because they are unable to awaken to the supreme Buddha or nirvana that is one with samsara. For the person of samsara existence, nirvana, quote, has neither color nor form. Thus, the mind cannot grasp it, nor words describe it, close quote. It cannot be seen, heard, or even conceived and named. According to basic Mahayana thought, however, it is not a quiescent void, but is active as non-discriminative wisdom in which Buddha and sentient beings, Nirvana and Samsara are non-dual. This wisdom, while maintaining its non-discriminative character, naturally gives rise to discrimination and when it does so, perceiving wisdom and its objects become distinct, and the supreme reality which transcends conception takes on forms so that it can be expressed in worldly terms. At that time, formless Buddha manifests the fulfilled and accommodated Buddha bodies, and great compassion works to teach Dharma and liberate beings. Shinran discusses the process by which Nirvana or Buddha becomes active in samsara by adopting Tan Luan's distinction between formless Dharma body as suchness, which is synonymous with Nirvana or oneness, and Dharma body as compassionate means, which can be conceived through such concepts as Amida's vow and name. Quote, From this oneness, form was manifested. This form is called Dharma body as compassionate means. Taking this form, the Buddha proclaimed his name as Bhikshu Dharmakara and established the 48 great vows that surpass conceptual understanding. This Tathagata has fulfilled the vows which are the cause of his Buddhahood and thus is called Tathagata of the fulfilled body. This is none other than Amida Tathagata. Close quote. Since human beings have no means of grasping nirvana or true reality directly, the Dharma body as compassionate means, Amida Buddha, emerged from nirvana and manifested form in the temporal world of samsara. Were it not for Amida, beings would remain trapped in ignorance. Dharma body as compassionate means, quote, refers to manifesting form, revealing a name, Namu Amida Butsu, and making itself known to sentient beings, close quote. Through hearing the name and learning of the vow, beings take refuge in Amida Buddha. Concerning Amida, however, Shinran states, quote, Appearing in the form of light called the Tagata of unhindered light filling the ten quarters, Amida, the Dharma body, as compassionate, is without color and without form. That is, identical with Dharma body as suchness, dispelling the darkness of ignorance and unobstructed by karmic evil. Close quote. Although form is manifested, it is the form of light. In other words, Amida is none other than wisdom. Hence, he is also, quote, without color and without form. The Buddha acts, radiating unhindered light or wisdom compassion throughout the cosmos and bringing beings possessed of blind passions to realization of Shinjin. Moreover, since he is also formless and, quote, identical with Dharma body as suchness, Beings who take refuge in him enter a process by which they are brought to realize supreme enlightenment. The nature of Amida as the form of formless reality or nirvana is reflected in the nature of Shinjin. Shinran states that nirvana or dharma body or tathagata quote, fills the hearts, minds of the ocean of all beings, close quote. Further, quote, since it is with these hearts and minds filled by dharma body as suchness of all sentient beings that they entrust themselves to the vow of the dharma body as compassionate means, this Shinjin is none other than Buddha nature. This 
Buddha nature is Dharma nature. Dharma nature is Dharma body. Close quote. On the one hand, Dharma body as suchness pervades the minds of beings, and with these minds they realize Shinjin and entrust themselves to the vow. On the other hand, through the name and light of Amida, the Dharma body is compassionate means, sentient beings are brought to realize Shinjin, and this Shinjin is Dharma nature or Dharma body. These two activities are not independent, for the two dimensions of Dharma body, as suchness and as compassion, quote, differ but are not separable. Dharma body as suchness always fills the minds of all sentient beings. And when beings realize Shinjin, when their minds become one with the mind of Dharma body as compassionate means, for the first time this becomes known to them. Before realization of Shinjin, they are unaware of it, for the unenlightened delusional minds of beings and the Dharma body as suchness that fills them stand in absolute opposition and mutual negation. For this reason, the basic Mahayana teaching that all beings possess Buddha nature is not a form of pantheism. Through the transformation that occurs with the realization of Shinjin, this opposition is overcome, and the unenlightened mind becomes aware of Dharma body, or true reality, that fills it. Thus, to realize Shinjin is to return to one's fundamental reality. For Shinran, there is no working of Dharma body as suchness apart from the working of Amida to grasp beings and bring them to realization of Shinjin. Thus, to entrust oneself to the vow, to be grasped by Amida, is none other than the working arising from supreme enlightenment. It is for this reason that Shinjin signifies the awakening or wisdom born when one, quote, overturns the delusion of ignorance that its realization is attained of the stage of non-retrogression, and that people of Shinjin, quote, realize great, complete nirvana, the eve of the moment of death. Although not yet supreme enlightenment, it is what arises when sentient beings, who had been completely immersed in samsara and incapable of knowing nirvana or suchness, have their ignorance swept away by unhindered light. It is wisdom, quote, received from Amida, and signifies having awakened in the form of entrusting to the vow, to the nirvana or true reality that fills one. In other words, the self-awareness or self-knowledge of one who has realized Shinjin has delved to that dimension of one's existence in which mutually opposing elements Samsara and nirvana, time and timelessness, form and formlessness, falsity and truth, fuse and interpenetrate. Although there are many terms for formless true reality in Buddhist texts, emptiness, suchness, dharma body, thusness, oneness, Shinran adopts yet another word, jinnen, to express it. Literally, jinnen is an adverb meaning of itself spontaneously, or naturally, and also came to be used as a noun, naturalness, or nature in the sense of mother nature. In using this term for suchness or supreme Buddha, he expresses the ultimate attainment of the pure land path, and also his broad vision of this reality as inherently active, giving rise to the working of wisdom compassion. Jinan, or naturalness, is true reality that transcends all form and at the same time it is always in motion, functioning as the liberating force that encompasses the lives of ignorant beings. From the human perspective, he defines Jinan to mean, quote, being made to become so of itself. That is, being brought to awakening through the Buddha's working and not through one's own designs. It is spontaneous activity of compassion, free of human calculation and intention. Shinran identifies various aspects of Jinnen in its active dimension. It works, quote, to have each person entrust himself in Namo Amida Butsu, close quote. Thus, quote, there is no place at all for the practicer's calculation, 
in moving toward attainment of Shenzhen. On bringing one to realization of Shenzhen, it transforms all one's past, present, and future karmic evil into good, and thereafter, quote, drawn with the primal vow as the karmic cause, one attains birth in the pure land naturally, by Jinan, close quote. Further, quote, Jinan is itself the fulfilled land, the pure land. Every aspect of our liberation from samsaric existence, then, and our perfect realization of enlightenment, comes about not through our calculation, but naturally by Jinan. Shinran further explains Jinan as true reality in relation to the fundamental significance of the vow. Quote, Amita's vow is the vow to make us all attain the supreme Buddhahood. The supreme Buddha is formless, and being formless is called Jinan. When this Buddha is shown as having form, it is not called the supreme Nirvana or Buddha. In order to make us realize that true Buddha is formless, it is expressly called Amita Buddha. Amita Buddha is the medium through which we are made to realize Jinan. Close quote. Jinan signifies both formless, supreme Buddha, and the working of Amida's vow, which arises from and brings all beings to the supreme Buddhahood that is formless. The path extending from present life to formless supreme Buddhahood, the final overcoming of form, comes at the moment of death. Birth into the pure land at the end of life means realization of perfect enlightenment. Nevertheless, the movement from the ocean of the vow, or dharma body as compassionate means, to nirvana, or dharma body as suchness, occurs not through the effort and calculation of the being, but through chinen, the inconceivable working of the Buddha's wisdom. We cannot know how or when that movement takes place. It is impossible to determine a boundary line, such as the time of death to that which is formless. From Shinran's comments of Jinan above, written when he was 86 years old, it is clear that his religious awakening had matured so fully that it delved to Dharma body as suchness. In the experience he calls realization of Shinjin, he came to know Jinan. Thus, he speaks of the ocean of Shinjin that is itself suchness or true reality. In taking refuge in the primal vow, he also went beyond the vow, and in deepening his experience of hearing the name or realizing Shinjin, he transcended the form of Namu Amida Butsu, its meaning or utterance, and came to carry on his life within the true and real existence or Jinan that works without forms. However, he concludes his comments on Jinan with an admonition, quote, after we have realized that this is the way it is, we should not be forever talking about Jinan. If one always talks about Jinan, then the truth that other power is no self-working will again become a problem of self-working. This is the mystery of the wisdom of Buddhas. Close quote. Once one has apprehended the nature of Jinan intellectually, one should not continue to analyze it. For to seek to fathom it with the mind is to remain caught upon forms and concepts. It is precisely where the human intellect ceases to press its devices and designs that the world of Jinan opens forth. Hence the phrase, quote, no self-working, close quote. No calculation and intentionality, quote, is true working, close quote. The dynamic of the vow.